Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about Cauchy's Residue Theorem, which can be used when you're trying to determine integrals on contours that contains one or multiple singularities. The central theme of this theorem is the residue, so I will start by explaining exactly what these are. And after that I will teach you how to find them, and then we'll end by doing a lot of examples. So let's get going. Cauchy's Residue Theorem states that if gamma is a simple closed positively orientated contour, and if we have a function f which is analytic on and inside this contour gamma, except at some points which we are going to denote as c0, c1 and so on, which lies inside of gamma, then we know that this integral is going to be equal to 2 pi i times the sum of all residues of this function. And here I want to denote that this thing here is just a way to denote the residue of the function f at the point cj. So what is a residue? Some of you might remember this because we talked about it briefly when we did Laurent series. The residue of a function f at an isolated singularity, c0, which we denote as the following, is the coefficient a minus 1 in the Laurent series expansion of this function around the point c0. So if I for some function f write out the Laurent series expansion around some isolated singularity, c0, then the residue of this function at the point c0 is simply the coefficient a minus 1 in this expression. And this leads us to our next subject, which is how to determine a residue at some point c0. The first way is the same way as we did here above, which is simply that we write out the Laurent series for a function around the point c0, and then we look at the coefficient a minus 1 to determine the residue. The second way we can do it is that if the point c0 is a simple pole, then we know that the residue can be determined by the following formula. And the last option is that if the point c0 is a pole of higher order, let's say of order m, then we can use this formula instead. The real funny thing here about these three options is that they are actually the same option in disguise. Because all of them uses the fact that you write out the Laurent series and identify the coefficient a minus 1. And if you have a pole for a function at this point, then you can do some neat tricks with the Laurent series expansion to determine the coefficient a minus 1, which will give you the last two options here. And I will of course make sure to prove all of this to you in another video. Because now we will continue by doing some examples. So here I would like us to determine all the integrals down here by using residues. And as you can notice the contour is going to be the same for all of these problems. In the first example we can notice that the function has a pole of order 1, also known as a simple pole, at c is equal to 0. And if we apply the residue theorem to this integral we get the following. And notice here that we only have one isolated singularity inside of this contour which means that we will only have to determine one residue. And now the only thing we have to do is to simply determine the residue of this function at the point c is equal to zero. And I'm going to show you how we can do this in two ways. We can for example use our first option and rewrite this expression as its Laurent series expansion around the point c is equal to zero. And if I do that we get the following. And the trick here is to realize that 1 divided by c already is on the right form. And the only thing we really need to do is to rewrite the factor cosine as its Laurent series expansion around this point, and then multiply these two together. So by writing out the Laurent series expansion for this function, we can now notice that the residue for this function at the point c is equal to 0 is going to be equal to 1. But since we also had a simple pole at this point, we could also have used the second option, so let's do that. So if I just write out the formula, we get the following. And here we can notice that we can simplify this a bit by observing that we have c minus 0, which is simply c, divided by c. And if we simplify this, we get the following. And if we now take the limit for this expression, we get cosine of 0, which is simply going to be equal to 1, which is the same thing we got up here, but in this case I think it was a bit faster to get it, right? You can use whichever method you prefer more, but I would still recommend you to use the second one if you are short on time, 
or if you are having trouble to write out Valeron series. And if we now insert this result up here, we get that the integral is simply going to be equal to 2 pi i. In our next example, we can see that we have a simple pole at c is equal to 1. So if we once again use Cauchy's residue theorem, we get the following. And now we can use the second method to determine the residue at c is equal to 1. So if we use the formula, we get the following. And now we can once again notice that we have two factors that are the same and cancel each other out. And by therefore simplifying this expression a bit, we get the following. And if we now take the limit as c approaches 1, we get cosine of 1, which is going to be our residue at the point c is equal to 1. And by now inserting this result up here, we get that the integral is going to be equal to 2 pi i times cosine of 1. In our third example, we have two poles, one at c is equal to 0 and one at c is equal to 1. And we are therefore going to have two residues when we are applying the residue theorem to this integral. And since both of these two points are simple poles, we can use the second option. So if we start with the residue at c is equal to 0, we get the following. And this thing can be simplified to the following. And if we now take the limit as c approaches 0, we get the following. And here we can see that we get 1 divided by minus 1. So the end result is simply going to be equal to minus 1. And if we now do the same thing for the second residue, we get the following. Here we can simplify by cancelling out the two factors c minus 1. And if we now take the limit as c approaches 1, we get that the residue at c is equal to 1 is simply going to be equal to minus 1. So if we insert these two results up here, we get that the integral is going to be equal to 2 pi times minus 2. So it's simply going to be equal to minus 4 pi i. In our last example, we have a simple pole at c is equal to 0, but then we will have a pole of order 2 at c is equal to 1. So by applying the residue theorem, we get the following. And now we can determine the residue at c is equal to 0 by using the second option, since the pole at this point was simple. So by using the formula, we get the following. And here we can simplify by cancelling out the two c's, which will give us the following. And if we now take a limit and insert c is equal to 0, we get the following. So here we get 1 divided by 1, it seems, which is simply going to be equal to 1. In the case of our next residue, we are going to have to use our third option, since the pole at this point, c is equal to 1, was a pole of higher order. So if we use the formula to write here for this point, we get the following. And notice here that the pole was of order 2, and therefore m in our formula is going to be equal to 2. Here we can see once again that we can simplify by removing common factors, which in this case is going to be equal to c minus 1 raised to the power 2. Then you can also notice that we take the derivative with respect to c 2 minus 1 times, so that's simply one derivative. So by applying these two simplifications, we get the following. And the last thing I'm going to do is to rewrite the expression inside the parenthesis here, just to make it a little bit more easy for us to determine the derivative. So if we now take the derivative, we get minus 1 divided by c raised to the power 2. And if we now take the limit and insert c is equal to 1 into this expression, we get the following. So the residue at c is equal to 1 is simply going to be equal to minus 1. And if we now go back and insert these two results into our formula, we get that the integral is going to be equal to 2 pi i times 1 minus 1. So everything is simply going to be equal to 0. That was everything for this time and I hope that you learned something new about residues and how we can use them to determine integrals in complex analysis. And if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. And lastly, I would like to thank everyone that voted in the last poll I did in the community tab, where I asked if you rather have the proof and the examples in the same video, or if I should continue to split them up. I have not yet decided, so please let me know what you think in the comments here or in the community tab. Consider subscribing if you like what I do here. 
and thanks for watching.